I embarked on a journey that scared me. I watched every single Architectural Digest open door since 2013. Hey, A.D. Hey, A.D. Hey, A.D. Hi, A.D. <sighs> oh my God, Architectural Digest. What's Hi. up, A.D.? Hi, A.D. Hey, A.D. Hi, A.D. Hey, A.D. Hi, A.D. Hey, A.D. Hi, A.D. Hi, A.D. Hi, A.D. Before this, I watched Architectural Digest videos like you. I laughed about the limes, I watched The Wealthy Wealth, but this is the internet. All mindless fun must be interrogated, which is how I know that Debbie Ryan and Emma Chamberlain have the same corn tables. Cara Delevingne and Mandy Moore have the same pink plates. That nearly everyone says this is where the magic happens about the bedroom or the kitchen and one time the bathroom. That Big Sean and Kendall Jenner both use copper rings to help with the energy. And Lance Armstrong, g Easy, and Serena Williams all have old timey popcorn machines. Like any person who's unhappily done a job in corporate America, I turn to spreadsheets. I cried while inputting a spreadsheet. This one is both thorough and badly formatted. But I wanted to answer questions like, where are these places? Is there always a fruit bowl? Is Martin Lawrence Bulliard going to jump scare me for the fifth time? And how many of these people sell their house right away? I watched 151 of these. Technically I watched more, but I'm not including people's businesses because I don't wanna hear about Seth Rogen's like workplace unless they're starting a union. But there were natural divisions in the timeline of these videos. So I'm splitting up the 151 open doors into periods. Like the first 37 videos are like at the beginning of your period when you can tell something's wrong, but you can't pinpoint what it is yet until you wake up covered in blood. I'm not going to stick with that metaphor, but I do think it's a pretty good description of these early open door videos. They didn't really have the name down yet, they didn't have the structure, but they are celebrity house tours. Most of these are between one and three minutes long, and they're pretty much a glorified trailer for a magazine article. They were following the ethos of the time that no one was going to watch a video longer than a minute. Viva Levine. I refer to this period as the Stone Age. Sure, there were highlights. Patrick Dempsey's wood wall, Mindy Kaling's living room, Julianne Moore sitting crisscross applesauce. But the lows, they're so low. This was a time of exploration and in the AD Stone Age, you're just trying things and seeing what sticks. Or what six. Like the video film by Disney star Peyton List that feels like we've been taken hostage and forced to get motion sickness. Couch, comfy chairs, my dog Potter. Here's the kitchen. I love the white countertops. Or a complete music video by John Mellencamp that shows barely any of his house. We wish I could draw a conclusion. Or a photo montage of Tom and Giselle's mansion with quotes like, I want to live in a place that feels like a real home. At this point, I thought this would be the most boring video I've ever made because every single one of these videos was extremely dry. Like eating six saltines in a minute except it's like 37 saltines in 72 minutes. And that brings us to the next age, the Iron Age, which started when Iron Man did improv on the internet. Robert Downey Jr. showed off his cool windmill house in the Hamptons. And it felt like when your friends show you their place and they only focus on the novelty plastic garbage they have and absolutely none of the nice things. And this is just for those intimate nights, you know? Stared at by what is clearly a Greek god. <laughs> They let you peek at a messy room. He introduces you to his brother. They both keep worrying about the cats getting out. They are hovering. Yeah, I'll- uh, We're gonna have to pick them up. I'll take one, you take the other. Come here, Monty. Come here, Dart Dart. Now previously, personality would so rarely make it through an Architectural Digest edit. But in this one, it felt like the intention was to entertain. What a concept. And what really made this video the start of a new age was its success. It had 2.5 million views within a month of being up, compared with their average, which would be lucky to get 100K. And from that point on, they would match the beats that happened in that video. The intro saying hello, the outro asking the audience to scram, the beat heavy music, the split screens. 
That video came out in 2017 and it began AD Open Doors as we know them. During COVID, there's a brief break from the style that they'd mastered, but it's only four to five videos filmed on cell phones before they're back to their highly produced programming. But the benefit of this time is they go much further away, like Columbia and Ohio in an undisclosed location where JB Smoove keeps his RV. And not to brag, but throughout this mission, I'm starting to perceive trends. I'm seeing pot filling faucets on top of stoves. Starting in 2018, there is a competition between gas ranges between La Cornet and Le Canche, which I only found out were two different things when I was looking back at my notes and was like, they both just start with La. We rented a house in Manhattan Beach that had one of these Lacanche ovens from France. And we said the next time we own a home, uh, we want to put one in. So this was a big deal for us. I refer to as the jewelry of the kitchen, which is a La Cornu. It's a great um, oven. It's so beautiful. So unnecessary. And then in 2021, I'm seeing the ovens in the islands with Nina Dobrev and Gwyneth Paltrow and Chrissy Teigen. I saw a lot of crystals in Zachary Quinto's house in 2018, and that is still going strong in 2023 open doors. In 2021, people started talking about earthquakes when they're talking about their design decisions, especially related to the bed. They're always like, we got this specially secured, or I hope nothing bad happens. Build something behind the wall to make sure that it's secure enough so that while I'm sleeping, it doesn't fall on my head and kill me. Cloud couches were practically holding these celebrities prisoner from 2018 to 2021. I have, you know, my really nice cloud couch. I feel like everyone has a cloud couch. Now, are they all talking to each other about these stoves or do they watch these videos? We get some occasional hints that some people watch open door tours, but it's pretty rare. Nate Burkus and his husband introduced themselves as the previously featured Ricky Martin and his husband. Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ricky Martin and my husband, John Joseph. I'm Ricky Martin. And I'm Juan <laughs> Yosef. Or Ariel Fulmer getting the waterfall marble countertop that she saw in Mandy Moore's open door. And I loved the waterfall aspect of this island. I saw her waterfall um, island. And I was like, we're doing that. But in general, you don't feel like they're watching these until it became such a cultural phenomenon that they kind of had to. Now, before we get to the final age, I sold you on a spreadsheet. So welcome to my spreadsheet. This is where the magic happens. It can feel like every other video is in California and that's a pretty good approximation because 47% of the houses featured are in California. 25% are in New York, almost always in the city and occasionally in the Hamptons. There have been six videos in Tennessee, five in Florida, four in England, three in Texas, two in Colombia, and one in Nigeria. This is the continental breakdown of videos, which suggests that they need to do some open doors in Asia, but I'll give them a pass for not featuring Antarctica yet. Now we get to where the fruits of my labor really paid off. How many videos feature a bowl of fruit? In 60% of open doors, there is a collection of fruit and vegetable on display. 18 of 98 fruit bowls include limes, 22 include oranges, and 28 include lemons. There is a general obsession with citrus, and I noticed dragon fruits and artichokes are both trending upwards. I may have gotten distracted by these fruits, but so did the celebrities. I love limes. <laughs> I love them. Yeah? Sorry. Oh, I should, I should mention, by the way, that we normally don't have um, 20 lemons in a bowl, but I was told this morning at about 7.15, can you go get 24 lemons? That's why this is here. This would normally be filled with um, juicy pears. And every morning we have like berries. It's not because you are filming here that we just got to look these bowls of berries here. I'm about to have some friends over. It's all laid out very neatly and we're gonna just sit here and share this one lemon. Also at 65% is the number of celebs who show a TV of some sort. This includes projectors, actual TVs, or a mirror TV that looks so bad. It's a mirror, no, it's a TV. No, it's a mirror, it's a TV. Trying to figure out how to turn it off. There we go. Turn room off. Okay, ah. we did it. And what about wood? How many celebs mention the special wood in their lives? 40% and a lot of them made me laugh. And this is our amazing bathtub. This is a teak bathtub. It's amazing. It's made by Scottish barrel makers. We, uh, we got our hands on some really cool wood early on and wanted to find a place to utilize it, so. It's a uh, barn in Wisconsin. Yep. 
Well, and the wood from this is from Venice, Italy, from the piers in Venice, Italy. They reclaim the wood, and then there's only like 17 or 18 dining room tables like this. So we purchased these three barns out of Wisconsin that were built by this incredible Amish community a little over 120 years ago. And then we just shipped out the barns and sort of just built the house with that wood. But, Speaking um, of wood, get that in that fire. This tree stump is actually from the front of my house. I cut it down two weeks ago. No, I'm just kidding. This is from my- Here's my grandfather's tree it's stump. It's my grandfather's tree it. stump. And there are other stats that come up more than you'd think. Five stripper poles that we saw, one thatched roof, four Christmas episodes, two wine promotions. I started a wine company. Obviously I like to drink Della Vita. Three candle closets, four pieces by James Terrell, and one fake Ruth Asawa. I don't have a category on the spreadsheet for adulterers, but I will say it's more than three and I know who you are and you also know who you are. There's a lot of dangers to parasocial relationships, but I swear I could introduce any pair of people on this list just by the stupid stuff in their house. Oh, Chelsea Handler, I've heard you like ice and ice machines. Let me introduce you to Lance Armstrong. No, not the space one, the shifty bracelet salesman. Yeah, he also loves ice. It could either start a friendship or a fist fight, and I don't really care which. Of all these houses, and there are many beautiful ones, there are only like nine of the 151 that I would feel remotely comfortable living in. The rest are so big and filled with marble that I'm convinced that I would pass out from exhaustion and then crack my head open on the hard surfaces. It's pretty clear that none of these celebs have played The Sims where you quickly realize that you want a small floor plan because if it's too big, it can make like a mansion, then your Sims will be, they'll be like, oh, I'm hungry. And by the time they finally make it to the kitchen, they'll be like, I'm about to pee my pants. You need to, they can't eat. They need to head over to the bathroom. They pee their pants. Oh no, now they have to get to work. It's gonna take them like two years to get to the helipad. It's, it's a waste. We also know that at least three of these were rentals, two of which were possibly just promotion for restoration hardware and one that was spiked seltzer promo but I'm pretty confident that none of them are getting paid to have their house on display. And I get to know that they have a frame joint of Willie Nelson's in their house. So what are they getting for this pretty intense infringement on their privacy? Usually it's promotion for their movie or show or record or possibly free furniture and interior design work, or perhaps a house sale. Like the video from Ashley Benson last month. The house was sold before the video even posted. So how many of these houses are sold soon after their feature? I'm using the listing date when I can because it shows the intention of wanting to sell. And some of these celebs I couldn't find information on because not everyone is equally famous or getting their house sales written about. But at least 29% of the houses are sold after being featured, most selling within two years. We're gonna go more into that in a minute, but now I wanna get back to the last AD age. AD achieves consciousness. AD achieves consciousness is the age that we're in now. And to me, it all started when YouTube chef Babish invited us into his home and immediately told us that he moved into this brownstone a couple months ago, watched David Harbour's open door, got the same designer and had it done this month. When I heard that you guys wanted to come through, I immediately started watching a whole bunch of open door episodes. And I happened across the one uh, with uh, David Harbour. He mentioned his designer by name in the video, Kyle O'Donnell of Gramercy Design. Uh, and I called up Kyle and uh, he agreed to work with me and he's done an absolutely beautiful job here. This was literally barren like two weeks ago. <laughs> we did a lot of this last minute because we knew you guys were coming. If the 20 lemons weren't showing that this whole thing involved a lot of smoke and mirrors, he kind of admitted to this all being for show. Of course, there were always hints before, but now Open Door had become so popular that almost everyone featured had interacted with it as media first. Hi, AD. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Which is how you get videos that feel so meta and aware of themselves. The actors and celebs are not just in the video, but they understand their place within the collection of videos as a whole. I love limes. <laughs> I love them. They're great. I love them so much and I like to present them like this in my house. Limes. I love limes. I keep them in my house all the time. Just like beautiful and... I just have limes everywhere. It's just limes, limes, live limes. Kind of like, like a, a speakeasy. I'm into the Raven's Den. The reason why we call this place the Raven's Den oh, is yeah. this is the Raven. 
this little bird is from Aaron Paul's house. And I went to that house and I was starstruck by that house because I had watched the 80 video. I had to be like, oh, where's the bathroom? I know exactly where the bathroom is. Anyway, he gave me this because apparently everybody who goes to the bar in that house um, gets one of these. And so I have a little memento from my favorite AD video. How cool is that? And in becoming aware of AD Open Door, the featured celebs are also becoming aware of its power and perks. Like Adam Levine barely getting through half the tour before saying, this house isn't for sale either for at least a year. But this is never leaving, so it's never for sale. And this house isn't for sale either. <laughs> so don't even think about it for at least a year. <laughs> And part of me thinks it's a fair trade. We get to see their home, they get to sell it for a lot of money. If they want to be their own real estate agent, put on the tailored red blazer, I don't mind. And the power of real estate works for many people, like Nate Burkus and Jeremiah Brent, who through these videos, I've seen four of their houses that they've lived in in the past eight years. And I think you will quickly see a trend. Bought New York City apartment in 2013 for 5 million, featured in 2015, sold in 2016 for 9.8 million. Bought California home in 2016 for 8.8 .8 million, featured in 2018, sold in 2019 for 11.4 million. Bought another New York City apartment in 2019 for 9.8 million, featured in 2020, sold in 2021 for 13.5 million. And then they actually bought back their original New York City apartment in 2021 for 8.9 million, featured in 2022, and they still own it for now. They are making money off their house sales clearly, and they might be the most prolific in open door history, but they're not alone in making it work for them. Ashley Tisdale is another person who has become known as an interior designer and house flipper in the LA universe. Ashley paid 2.6 million in 2017, featured in 2018, sold for 3.6 million in 2019. And then Ashley paid 4.1 million in 2019, featured and sold in 2022 for 5.78 million. And I don't know if Ashley Tisdale decided to focus on interiors because she wanted to bop to the top of the real estate game or if it was more consistent than royalty checks from High School Musical 1 through 3. But with the current writers and actor strikes, you can imagine how it'd be helpful if you had a different stream of income that was separate from your Hollywood career. And if it got to be your housing during the process, even better. In August, an executive was anonymously quoted saying this about the strikes. The end game is to allow things to drag on until union members start losing their apartments and losing their houses. And it would probably be a long time before it would affect the people in these 80 open doors. But Billy Porter, someone I think of as very famous and successful and someone I could imagine doing an 80 open door. He said last month that he will have to sell his house. He needs his paychecks to pay his mortgage and his projects have stopped. And it's pretty gross to think that housing insecurity is the trick up studio's sleeves. And it's hard not to feel like this is the more glamorous version of what's happening in a lot of industries. As you can imagine, watching 151 really expensive house tours, I started to descend into madness. At some point, I became kind of numb to the idea that these were houses. They became content for me to consume, and I think that's how a lot of viewers see them. And I don't think it's just because I watched 150 of these and kind of lost my mind. I think their intention is to make housing entertainment which is very enjoyable to watch, but it also separates housing from its true intention, shelter. And I think there's a Marie Antoinette-like fascination with how these celebrities are living. How many sinks are in your kitchen? Show me your chandelier. I'm curious. But if their setup is modest, it's not really satisfying. It doesn't feed the beast. And it's not just AD open door. There's an entire network built on housing, not really being for housing, but instead for amusement and money. And it's in those shows like Flip or Flop, where you're no longer looking at a house as a place to live, but instead see it as an investment or an accomplishment. And when housing is purely entertainment or extremely lavish, you might think it's not for everyone. Then it's easy to forget that at its core, it's something that everybody needs. When housing is seen as only an asset, it removes it from the living. I feel like I barely scratch the surface with bizarre things that happen in these 80 open doors. I'd love to do a best of what I've seen. Liv Tyler in a crawl space, Lenny Kravitz on a horse, my theory on all these celebs books. Now I must admit, I have a podcast which is kind of similar to Open Door where I go to the historic homes of artists and creatives who are long dead and then walk through their house and learn about their life. 
I don't talk to their ghosts, but it's about as close as you can get to an open door with a dead person. It's called Someone Lived Here. It's audio only, but I've recently added a few episodes with photos and images here on YouTube. If you thought this was interesting, I have a video that features a Burt Reynolds 1980s Architectural Digest featured in this video, and then also a video on what happened to cheap food about diners and automats. I make videos about architecture and connect it to movies and TV. If you subscribed, you're invited to my internet house. It's a open door policy, so feel free to invite your friends. Thank you all. Bye. Hi, welcome to my Brains Open Door on AD Open Door Tours. Come on in. Get out of my house. <laughs>